What's up you guys, welcome back again to your Heroclix headquarters. Today, we're gonna be counting down my picks for the top five Heroclix of 2023. Now this year was jam packed full of amazing sets. You know, we got a bunch of new Iconics figures and some great convention exclusives on top of all of it. So this was a really hard list to make. So I'm only doing my personal picks that I personally have enjoyed the most this past year. So of course your list will probably be very different than mine. Make sure to let me know what you guys think in the comments, what your top five of 2023 were. But without further ado, let's get to the list. All right, but starting us off at number five is the Prime Batman from Batman Team Up. Uh, this guy is super cool, one of the coolest figures uh, in this entire set of this entire year, basically. Uh, just that, you know, amazing sculpt on this Batman with that cape flowing in the wind is so cool. And, you know, all the green, the bright green was pretty nice. Just that Green Lantern power, very cool. Uh, yeah, so this guy is just so awesome. Uh, the sculpt is like 10 out of 10. And uh, he's pretty great at either 100 or 25 points. First, he's got the trait in Darkest Night that lets him start the game assigned and equipped with uh, both the utility belt and the Green Lantern ring, which is awesome. The utility belt, of course, giving him a whole selection of things like Range Combat Expert with a minimum four range, uh, Free Smoke Cloud, which is especially good for him. Uh, you know, you can get like shape change, improved movement characters, you can get like in cap, force blast, leap climb, uh, re regen and support, all kinds of things. So the utility pill is pretty useful. And then of course the Green Lantern ring gives willpower or plus one if you can already use it. And the ability to, uh, in his case, for a free action, since he has the Green Lantern keyword, uh, to just make constructs, which of course all the constructs do everything that they do. You got the flurry blades, the, you know, close combat expert with the boot that can free knock back stuff uh the you know stop sign for the barrier all those other ones though so all the constructs are super useful uh but yeah then he's got the free smoke cloud or sorry smoke cloud and smoke cloud as free but only generate one marker opposing characters occupying or adjacent to batman smoke cloud markers can't use improved movement abilities and must break away as if they were adjacent to batman so it's really good for locking up a whole bunch of people uh, especially if you're on the utility belt to get the full free smoke cloud so you can make a ton of smoke to just lock up a bunch of people and, uh, you know, he has his own uh, just portable hindering terrain there, basically, for his stealth. And then I am willpower. Invincible willpower. When Batman uses willpower and succeeds after resolutions, modify his combat values by plus one until your next turn. So, again, super good. Uh, on his 100-point line, he gets to, like, a 13 for five if he gets his willpower, which he gets plus one because of the ring. Uh, you got running shot seven range, which would be... You know, if you get that willpower roll, you're running shotting five plus one to six and shooting for eight. So he's got really long reach there. And, you know, he got some good outwit, um, some perplex there. If you're just playing him at 25, though, he's got phase teleport, which combos nicely with his Green Lantern team ability to carry a bunch of people around. Uh, you know, he's got stealth, of course, with the free smoke cloud. He's got that full dial free smoke cloud. He's got some barrier and some outwit. So he's a very useful 25 points, especially because he still has everything he can do from the utility belt, as well as the Green Lantern ring generating those constructs. So he's incredibly useful and efficient 25 points. Whether it's, you know, carrying around your whole team, outwitting something, barriering something, uh, generating a construct to do more barrier or to flurry blades or make an attack or knock somebody back or to wipe out barriers with the hydrant. That's another really good one. Um, or, you know, getting range combat expert from the belt can make him a decent attacker as well. You know, he goes up to like, I think, 11-3, was it? Uh, yeah, he'd be 11 for 3 with that range combat expert, so he could be making some attacks. And yeah, uh, he's got a lot of really cool things. He can lock up a bunch of people with the smoke. He can just put himself in hindering, which is nice. And then at 100 points, he's super fun. You know, if you get that willpower roll, he's super strong. And uh, he's just a lot of fun to build around. I love playing him with like the Chase Robin from this set. Because then uh, his name is still Batman, so every time he like does something, then that Robin can go do something, and he can carry around that Robin and a bunch of other people to like enhance him or you know up his stats some more in some way, shape, or form. So he's great. I like him a lot. He's one of the coolest figures of the whole year. He was, of course, everybody's biggest want from that entire set. I think he's still the uh, most expensive figure from the whole set. So for all those reasons, he's coming in at number five. All right, you guys, coming in at number four. I know it's. Kind 
kind of cheating, but we have all of the Masters of Evil chases from Avengers 60th anniversary. Uh, this also kind of includes Mephisto by default. Now, I don't actually have Mephisto, but I do have a Steam Up card here, and uh, I, I'll save time. I won't really go over all of them too much, but I'll just want to talk about kind of my favorite ones here. The main one I really love and really wanted to go after, first of all, was Iron Inquisitor. Uh, just because I do love Stark Industries teams, you know, I collect all the Iron Man armors and everything. So I had to get this guy number one. And uh, he's just amazing. He fits my play style perfectly too, because I just love playing him at 50 points for the TK and his special powers here that he has on the back of his card here. And that's the perplex that when Iron Inquisitor uses it to target another friendly character, that character can use probability control until your next turn. Uh, so just perplexing up your main attacker, TKing them out, and then they can prob themselves is so good. And then he also has a pervious, but can reduce penetrating damage. And adjacent friendly characters can use mastermind, but only to choose characters with the Masters of Evil keyword, protected outwit. Uh, now, you do have to make sure they still share a keyword or are, uh, you know, higher point value. So just keep that in mind. But still, being able to protect all of your adjacent friendlies with that effect, and, you know, it's protected outwit and everything. He's got TK and Perplex that gives them prob. Uh, and he's got Shield TA on top of that and Masters of Evil if you uh, happen to get up close there. So he's just so good. I just love everything he can do. My second favorite one, uh, Black Skull. I actually just like to start out with this guy so you can roll for leadership and uh, try to get his uh, little war machine tokens. Uh, just so cool. And he's also, you know, really good to switch into. Charge, Flurry, Stealth, Giant Reach 2. Uh, if you need a good close attacker, Blades Exploit and everything. Steel Energy 2 if you need to heal up. So he's a really good one to switch into. And of course... Uh, my third favorite, green, uh, sorry, Ghost Goblin. I love, you know, Spider-Man villains and go uh, Ghost Rider. So, you know, crossing one with a Ghost Rider is so cool. And he's actually great, you know, really strong energy explosion that does penetrating damage power. And then he's got uh, a cool effect later on with the Perplex and Outwit. And when he uses either to target an opposing character after resolutions, you may deal them one damage. Um, to uh, one damage to a character adjacent to the target, sorry. So yeah, you can just get some free damage in just by perplexing or outwitting something. Super good. Um, so yeah, I really like him a lot, and I love his team-up card too for, you know, Sinister Syndicate, and of course, um, Dark Phoenix, super strong. Killmonger, you have to have him. Only one I really want that I'm missing besides Mephisto is Doom Supreme. All of these chases are so good, and the reason I'm kind of cheating here, I know just picking multiple characters, but you know, they do all have the Multiversal Masters of Evil trait, that you just simply give them a free action if they begin your turn on the map and replace them with another character with this trait, so you can just swap them out for any other one at any time. It's just like a super shifting focus power. Um, you know, you get a whole different character, a whole different dial, a whole different set of powers and abilities, and they all do do such cool and interesting things offensively or defensively. They're so good. Um, they're such great support figures, and they're just such a great little toolbox for your team. It's so much fun playing them, actually. And they also just, the sculpts on them are so amazing. You know, I know that they're super hard to find and expensive, and uh, they did really shape the meta of 2023. But just besides all that, like, they look amazing, they play amazing, they're super fun and interesting to play with. And I've had a lot of fun playing with them, and I, you know, I didn't even really think that I would, but I have. And uh, I had to go out of my way to collect some of them. I still got to go out of my way to get some more of them. So they're just really amazing figures. And for all those reasons, they're coming in at number four. All right, coming in at number three for 2023. I gotta give it to the Scott Porter twins here. Again, kind of cheating, picking multiple figures, I know. But, uh, I mean, just like with the Masters of Evil, you have to play all of them to really play them. Uh, you, If you're playing one Scott Porter, you're probably playing both of them. Uh, you don't have to by any means, but they just work so well 
for theme teams specifically, like you might as well just play them both. They're so cheap at only 25 points each. Honestly, I'm almost sick about talking about them already because I talked about them a lot, you know, with like the previews when they were coming out. I talked about them when I did a little unboxing video for them. I've talked about them on like every team build that I've made. So, you know, they are just so amazing, obviously. They just do so much stuff. Uh, they pretty much single-handedly brought back theme teams as an option because once the rules changed earlier in 2023 uh, with the Spider-Man set to where the only thing theme teams really got you was a bonus to map roll, um, it was pretty much, you know, what's the point? <laughs> you get a little bit of bonus to map roll, that's nice, but unless you really, really, really need map, you might as well just play the best team you can out of whatever you got. Uh, so theme teams really weren't a thing for a minute there until we got these Scott Porters. Because they just do so much stuff, you know, first of all, you get extra uh, plus one to your map roll to go first. Then you get like, one of them gives you plus one attack to all characters, plus one defense to all characters, potentially plus one damage to all characters if they're all from the same set. You can't play the other Scott Porter then, uh, but you know, still, uh, you know, you get like healing every turn, you get like support or prob, you get rerolls um, across the map basically, perplex, TK, pulse wave that ignores friendlies and deals knockback. Uh, they just do honestly too much and they can fit on any theme team they can take team abilities you know there's just like nothing they can't do for 25 points so playing them both for 50 on a theme team is pretty much a no-brainer they're just amazing figures obviously i've had to just toss them in on basically every team i played i can't get away from them they're just that good so of course they had to be on the list um, unfortunately, they came out after Worlds, so they haven't really made their splash yet. I think we're really going to see the most of these guys into 2024 and beyond. But uh, they did come out in 2023, and I have played them quite a few times already. So like I've said before, they're just too good. And for those reasons, they're coming in at number three. All right, coming up next at number two for me is Carnage Silver Surfer. Again, I know this guy is super overpowered way too expensive. But at the end of the day, for me, this guy just has a great sculpt. He's just a Carnage symbiote wrapped around Silver Surfer, which, in my opinion, should be immensely overpowered. And uh, I'm kind of glad that he is. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, you know, it's cool. It's Carnage Silver Surfer. Like, of course, it's gonna be strong. Now, is he two little points for all that he does? Yeah, probably. Uh, sure, he definitely is, but he's still just so freaking cool to me. I love symbiotes. Anytime you put a symbiote on something, I'm going to be a fan of it. So this guy being like the strongest, one of the strongest symbiote characters we've ever had, you know, I've loved to play him. I've played him a million times. Sorry, I'm that guy. Um, but, you know, I don't play two of them. Hey, I don't play two or three of them at least. So I just like playing at least one. And uh, I love symbiote teams and he just makes them so good. And monster teams too. You know, monsters are really great with this guy as well. So, you know, as you can see here, he's got traded plasticity and shape change. Uh, he's got the trait there that whenever a friendly character with the symbiote keyword KOs an opposing character, after resolutions, you can heal him a click, so that can be him or any other friendly character with the symbiote keyword. And it just takes three KOs to get him to top dial with the 12 attack penetrating blast, four damage range combat expert, 19 invincible. So of course, that's 13 for five penetrating, six range triple target that can see through elevated, which is one of the strongest types of improved targeting. You know, he's power combat. Cosmic, so you can't outwit him, and he's got the willpower. And especially his main movement power here that gives him hypersonic speed, and when he uses it and hits after resolutions, he can make an attack. So he basically gets two attacks every turn, and if he KOs something with the first one, uh, these are both after resolutions effects, so he can choose to heal and then make another attack, maybe KO something and heal again, right? So it's pretty crazy. Then he does have Penetrating Blast and Steel Energy, but with close or range attacks as well on his special attack power. So he just has so much going on for only 50 points. You know, Super Senses and Shape Change to start out with for the double rollouts is so good. But I'm sure you guys don't need me to talk too much more about how good this guy is. He's seen so much play over the past year. I'm sure a lot of you are sick of seeing him. 
I still love him. I still think he's uh, one of my personal favorite figures of the whole year, and I've had nothing but fun playing with him and even against him. You know, he's a really strong figure, but I've even had fun just figuring out ways to take him down as well. So it's a 10 out of 10 figure for me, and for all those reasons, he's coming in at number two. All right, and as always, before we get to our number one pick, I have a bunch of honorable mentions to go through really fast. This year in clicks was amazing. We had so many great figures. This is one of the hardest top five lists I've had to do in a while. Um, so I just wanted to quickly go over, you know, as you can see here, I have a bunch of figures laid out that I want to talk about. I'm not going to really go in depth on any of them, but there's just been so many great figures this year. I mean, the iconic sets that we've gotten starting in 2023 have been amazing. They've all been great in my opinion, but you know, we got the Nightfall set was probably one of the best, if not the best. We've got the Death of Superman set with the Superman and Doomsday that, uh, also probably could have been the best set of the year for Iconics. Um, you know, Black Lantern, Superman, and Batman, among all the other Black Lanterns as well, just really top tier figures. Love them. Love Lanterns, and the Lantern versions of them are two of the best ones. Um, I'm a huge fan of Wolverine, so of course I love the epic Wolverine on the motorcycle. Uh, the sculpt on the freaking Ghost Surfer is so epic and cool, and I think he's got some really great untapped potential that uh, I can't wait to explore more into 2024. Again, like I said, big Ghost Rider fan, and this, uh, you know, King of the Underworld, Johnny Blaze, is so freaking epic. Love the sculpt, and he does something that is so unique and so cool and powerful, you know, just saying, I can't not use my powers. Haha, <laughs> -ha, there you go. Gotta love that. That's so cool and interesting. And then, you know, speaking of can't use powers, you gotta love the amazing figure that is Pegasus Captain America. So freaking amazing. The sculpt, 10 out of 10. The dial, 10 out of 10. Um, I kind of thought about putting him on the list more than some of them, actually. He was a top contender for sure. Uh, Prime Captain America, I had a lot of fun with this guy over the past year. Um, and so as some of my friends, you know, he's just a really fun figure to play with and against, in my opinion. Just I think the best Captain America they've ever made, except for this guy, you know, best regular Captain America. Uh, and this guy, probably the best Hulk they've ever made, Prime Hulk. Again, so much fun playing, uh, not really against him, I'll say that. Uh, he's such a pain in the butt to play against because he just does so much for 10 points. It is crazy. Um, you know, the Hawkeye-Hawkeye duo, so much fun. Again, a lot of untapped potential there. Really want to play a lot with them. And then we got Space Ghost. I mean, so cool to get Space Ghost of all things. Who would have thought? 2023, what an epic year to get some figures like this. And not just Space Ghost, but also like the Scooby Gang and the Batman team up set. So cool. Uh, I love the meme Shaggy from that set too. You know, the Ultra Instinct Shaggy. Freaking awesome. Um, and I mean, hey, even the 200 point Ghost Rider is a lot of fun. If we're talking about legacy cards, I didn't really want to include legacy cards, but freaking... Uh, you know, you got to talk about World's Finest. What an amazing legacy figure for sure. One of the best. There's also the Green Lantern that I don't have, unfortunately. Um, among some others, the, the Colossal Carnage, who I have on my shelf behind me. So freaking amazing. Oh man, what a year for clicks. It's been amazing. I think we've been so lucky to get some really great sets this year and some amazing Iconics figures and some amazing convention exclusives. And it's been one of the best years for clicks in a long time, maybe ever. So I've been enjoying it. I hope you guys have too. Without any further ado, let's get to my number one pick. All right, you guys. And if you haven't guessed it already, my pick for the number one figure of 2023 is, boom, the symbiote black suit Prime Spider-Man. Of course, this guy's coming out of the Spider-Man Beyond Amazing set. But man, oh man, this is the best Spider-Man we've ever had. And just by far in my opinion, one of the best Heroclix figures of all time and definitely worthy of the number one figure of 2023 for me. So, oh man, I just love this figure so much. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man, huge fan of Venom. Like I said earlier, you slap a symbiote on anything, I'm gonna love it. One of the main reasons I love this figure so much is just, it just feels so much like the Spider-Man from that story, like with the subconscious crime-fighting trait. 
uh, allowing him to just continuously make actions even when he's double tokened. Like when he just woke up in the middle of the night and he was out, you know, in the suit fighting crime. So cool. Uh, and it's just so strong too, you know, gameplay wise. And just, you know, charge, flurry, sidestep, the leap climb that he can place himself. Um, you know, he's got his own perplex there to start with. Super senses impervious that's protected outwit. So yeah, you got to play this guy at 80 points for sure. Um, you got the Spider-Man TA for those plus one super sense rolls, super strength so he can pick up terrain to hit people with. Man, he's just so good. He just does everything, you know. I've talked about him on a few team builds and my other previous top fives and um, reviews and stuff like that. So I've talked about him a lot before. I'm sure you guys have seen how crazy this guy is. I've got a couple gameplays with him, I think, on the channel as well. And I'll tell you, since this guy came out, I don't think I played hardly any games all year without this guy on my team. I'm not joking. I literally played like 100 games with this guy this year. It's crazy how much I played this figure. Um, and yeah, just, you know, all the teams that I played for fun, all the teams that I played actually like practicing for worlds and stuff, playing at worlds with it, um, didn't do as good as I'd hoped, honestly. I, I was pretty confident too, but uh, it was stiff competition. You know, it happens. And it doesn't matter. This guy's still my favorite figure of the whole year. But anyway, in the immortal words of Stan Lee, Nuff said, for all those reasons, this guy is coming in at number one. But stay tuned, because I have one other thing I want to share with you guys. So I wanted to give an extra honorable mention shout out to the Hall of Armors iconic set. This one holds a very special place in my heart personally because uh, it was the first thing that I ever got to like fully share, you know, before anyone else got to see it. I fully got to spoil... <sighs> so I just wanted to give a quick extra special shout out to my favorite set of the year, the Iron Man Hall of Armors iconic set. Uh, it just holds an extra special place in my heart personally because I did get WizKids to allow me to share this with you guys first before anyone else. So I got to, you know, reveal everything and I got to see everything for the first time too, which was amazing. Uh, so yeah, so cool. Um, I'm just so glad they allowed me to do that for you guys and uh, just for myself too because I'm just such a huge Iron Man fan and I have all the other figures and uh, I've always, literally since I started the game, been wanting exactly something like this that just, you know, we get these cool little pods to put them in and a little display base to set them on and it's just so cool and so much fun and uh, I really look forward to playing these guys a lot more in 2024 but uh, just the set releasing and me being able to share it with everyone and everything has really been one of the highlights of 2023 for me personally and uh, I didn't really feel right to put them at any number in the set or just put them in the honorable mentions or anything so I want to give them an extra special shout out here at the end because uh, it's just that extra special to me. Like I really got everything I'd ever hoped for in this set and then I got to share it with everyone as well. So, uh, so cool. I love it. It's 10 out of 10 for me. I really hope they do more of these. <laughs> like I really hope we get another Hall of Armor set. I want all the armors. Give me all the armors. Give me like a huge display case that I can just put a million of these little pod things in that just looks like the whole you know, Hall of Armors, and I just want all the armors to put in there. <laughs> just, that would be so amazing. That would be, uh, that would make my year. Hopefully by like 2025, 2026, we can see something like that. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I love this set. Uh, it was a big moment for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. But that is going to do it for this top five, and I can't wait to do a bunch more in 2024. All right, you guys, so that does it for this top five list. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button because it does help me out a lot. Don't forget to click that subscribe button up there so you don't miss any future videos. And if you guys would like to help support the channel even more, don't forget to check the links in the description for the Patreon or hit the join button down there for the YouTube memberships. Either way, for as little as $1 a month, you get entered into our monthly Patreon and membership giveaways, and you get to see your name here in the credits with all these other awesome people. So if that interests you, make sure to check that out. But that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, this has been Heroclix Headquarters, signing off.